Hi, my name is Steve Tegler. I'm a director of systems engineering in VMware's cloud native apps business unit. And this quick lightboard session is all about uh, persistent container storage. And uh, we do that at VMware with uh, an open source project called Project Hatchway. You can see up uh, here, I've got the vmware.github.io slash hatchway, which uh, goes through the details of how to actually configure and do this in your um, VMware environments. Now, most of us know that a lot of times containers are uh, seen as being used for stateless workloads. Um, the reality is with this Project Hatchway, we've got a couple of different options to actually maintain some state and use persistent volumes uh, with um, uh, container workloads. So I've got two examples here uh, pre-written to save some time here. I've got our, our standard Docker host environment. So if you have a Docker host virtual machine running in vSphere, um, this is something you can do. Uh, sorry, vSphere, uh, specifically just ESX for that matter, uh, free version of ESX, this works. Um, but in effect, it's a regular Docker uh, host VM. So what, what makes it a Docker uh, host is the fact that we've got the Docker engine running, okay? So as an administrator, there's a couple of administrative things I need to do up front to get this ready. Um, the first is that I need to install the vSphere Docker volume service vib into ESX. So do this the way you normally install vibs, just get that installed. The next administrative task before we're ready is that we need to basically install something in the container uh, host called the vSphere volume plugin. So vSphere volume plugin. And now we're set up and ready. Once we get those two configured, then if I have a user that uh, wants to create a container and in turn wants to create a volume, a persistent volume with that container, through the Docker uh, CLI or API, they can um, issue a request to create a persistent volume. And so what we do then, uh, what happens is that through the Docker engine, through the API, it calls the vSphere volume plugin and then in turn calls the vSphere Docker volume service and inside our data store, inside ESX, we end up creating a VMDK down here, okay? And so that VMDK then in turn is presented up to the actual Docker host. We've got our persistent volume here and we can connect that up. So you can iterate on your containers as much as you want. Um, you can always go back to that persistent storage that's going to exist. So that's our standard Docker uh, host environment. Second environment here is when we have uh, a Kubernetes environment. Okay, so a little bit different. And the big thing you'll probably see here is that it isn't just ESX, it's um, it's actually vSphere, okay? And the, the difference is that we're gonna be interacting with vCenter um, to provision some of these persistent volumes, okay? So what are, the, what are the components that are required here? Well, in Kubernetes, uh, we have something running called a kubelet. And that is the thing that interacts with um, the Kubernetes uh, uh, cluster services, so to speak. Um, we've got on top of those cluster services, uh, we've got an API, okay? So we've got the kubelet the in, uh, in the node, we've got the, um, the API. The second thing we actually need in the node here is the Kubernetes vSphere cloud provider. And so what that piece does is that that will, um, in turn, go talk to vCenter. So let's walk through this. There's actually a couple of different ways you can do persistent volumes in Kubernetes. Um, for the purposes of this, I'm going to talk about a situation where a user wants to create their own uh, volume or persistent volume claim. And so this user, in turn, will go through the Kubernetes API, will issue this persistent volume claim, and much the way it happens over here, um, through the API and the kubelet, we're going to go to the um, uh, the Kubernetes vSphere cloud provider. That's going to call vCenter down here. vCenter will in turn direct uh, the creation of, again, another VMDK down here in the data store. And then that VMDK is in turn mapped up to a Kubernetes volume. Okay. So uh, now um, I run my pod. 
and I have persistent storage associated with that pod. So that's the basics with, uh, uh, with Kubernetes persistent storage. Um, there's actually quite a few topics related to uh, Kubernetes and storage. So I mentioned a uh, persistent volume claim. There's also just persistent volumes if they've been pre-created pre for you. The persistent volume claim, which is creating them. Um, there are storage classes. And there's also these things called stateful sets, which is encompassing um, all, uh, a lot of the uh, storage configuration um, so that it's all encompassing. So there's these th four other topics which we could probably do some additional uh, light boards on, so look, uh, look to those in, in the future. Thanks for watching.